Uh, I guess we'll kick off. So my name's Eddie Satterly. Um, I have been working with IG for about 18 months and gone on quite the journey. Um, here to talk about that a bit. Um, happy to make this as interactive as you'd like. So I don't I don't like the talk and then have questions at the end. So people who don't work for IG, feel free to ask questions. Um, but we can answer them as we go along. Um, so essentially about a year and a half ago at this point, I came over with a couple of folks from my team uh, for my company in the US called Data Nexus and started working with IEG trying to take them on a journey uh, to thinking differently about the way uh, they collect and use uh, data from a lot of their systems and how they take it into a view of the customer. Um, I did a presentation about three or four months after that when we got a prototype up and running and uh, we've been kind of building strong ever since. Um, the first kind of part of the journey was all about changing the way that IG thinks about things. Um, 160 plus year old insurer is not the easiest boat to turn. Uh, getting the people to even think differently around leveraging open source. I mean, of course, IG was using open source a lot of places, but officially their policy was we don't use open source. Um, they were contributing via a few people. All officially the policy was they weren't contributing anywhere. Um, so kind of taking that and turning it into we actually need to leverage open source capabilities in order to be able to build what you're trying to build and be competitive in the market. And that, that started with obviously the culture change bits, making people think differently. And luckily we had a great champion in Julie Batch, who's the chief customer officer, who was trying to take the customer labs group and turn it into a different thinking, different kind of company within a company. Um, and her big push from the beginning has been really around, you know, open source, open thinking, you know, the fail fast methodology instead of the call everything is success even when it fails, uh, which is, you know, kind of how most big companies work. Yeah, we, we successfully delivered this failing project. Uh, you know, so that, that's, that, that, that thinking change was kind of the first part of it. And we spent literally the first uh, six months probably realistically, but at least most of the first three just getting past a lot of those conversations. Um, and in doing that, uh, between essentially April and June, we finally got some groundswell to say, yes, this is the way we need to solve this problem. We need to leverage open source tooling. We need to move towards it. Um, and the undertone of that was the reason I was here to begin with was because my company built an open source data platform, which we were bringing in to solve this problem, and they knew it. Uh, from an executive level, we just had to get everyone else buying in. Um, so that being said, we started looking at ways that we could leverage more open source technologies to do the work. Um, we tried out many different methodologies and ways of trying to get people to think differently and do differently, how to you know, take year-long delivery projects and turn them into you know, weeks and days, and everybody said it's impossible and you can't do it. And we went through that entire journey. And then we decided that in order to make this happen, we really needed to treat our infrastructure completely differently than the rest of the company, and that we needed to deliver something completely different capability-wise to even make this possible. So in doing that, we went through and we appeased the number of people in the existing organization and you know, we tested every offering that they had available to give to us, whether it's the you know, VMware option or the you know, legacy systems or whether it's dedicated hardware. We tested everything to prove that we needed to do something different to deliver the, what the high IO, high performance data workloads that we needed to be able to build these, this new customer platform. And what came out of that is this is never going to work. Um, you know, VMware I.O. is a big problem. You know, dedicated servers cost is a big problem. You know, putting sand behind that is just more horrible cost on top of cost, plus lower performance anyway from a disk perspective. You know, all these things just didn't fit a distributed systems high performing platform model. So we finally got to the point where we rolled in an appliance uh, and appliances are exempt from uh, special treatment, and we rolled in as an appliance and OpenStack platform. Uh, initially, uh, the, the first phase of that was an eight server platform, and then uh, played around a little with that, proved out all the things that we needed to prove to make everybody okay to sign off, and then last, this, or this year is January, so, you know, 10 months ago-ish, we uh, 
implemented in production, uh, the first of the Red Hat OpenStack uh, environment, and since then has grown uh, substantially from the initial half a rack we started with to two and a half racks now. Um, and then the same footprint has been applied even for some of the dedicated servers, that same uh, architecture has been applied uh, for either uh, rel host running KVM or just dedicated rel host to run workloads uh, where there was a, still a need and, and there's still an argument over cattle and pets thing, which you can go Google if you don't know what that is. Uh, but there, there are still some dedicated servers in the environment for stuff like our Greenplum uh, data warehouse appliance and those sort of things. The, the core of the customer platform and kind of the reason that this all came to be is really around an all open source based uh, approach to doing things. We have 147 core source systems within IG that run our critical insurance applications. They are all traditional database architectures. Um, and when I joined, we had 23 data warehouses of which to serve those up from based on acquisitions, organic growth, the many different ways in which teams were allowed to run their own. Uh, the decision was that that would get down to a much smaller number in three years as part of a simplification program that's going on across IAG and our leadership talked to investors about that last year, so it's pretty well known. Uh, but the, we're way ahead from a customer labs perspective. We were kind of the early adopters of the simplification process. We started about a year before the rest of the company. And in simplifying the, the platform is all about how do we get data warehouses down to something more reasonable so we can use that as an authoritative source to build this customer platform. So we moved away from the 23 warehouses on nine technology stacks and seven different data warehousing models. By the way, there's only seven that I'm aware of. We had implemented all of them. And some of them, you know, we had two data vault environments, we had at least five Kimball environments, you know, just to make sure we did it wrong. Um, so getting that simplified down, we, we are down to uh, six environments left as of a couple weeks ago when we were able to remove one more. Uh, we've given back about a million dollars worth of uh, high-speed disk. We've given back about $700,000 worth of compute. Um, and we've spent roughly half a million dollars to replace all of that. So you can do that ROI really quickly, and even if you didn't deliver anything new, the OPEX savings and CAPEX savings are pretty substantial, so it's well paid for itself. On top of that, we've actually been able to deliver uh, what's known as the SVX platform, SV small X, uh, single view of many things. Uh, the first of which was a customer view, which is what drove this. Uh, it was as a customer labs organization, the first thing Julie wanted to accomplish was getting a single view of our customers across all brands, regions, all the product lines. You know, how do we know who a customer is? And you know, I'm not allowed to talk actual numbers, but if you assume we had you know 100 million customers, which we all know can't happen in Australia, but let's assume if we have 100 million customers in our customer store, there's a good chance that we don't really have that many, and. A lot of that is because they have multiple products, multiple things, and everyone was treated differently. So even within a brand, if you had three different products, it is quite possible that you had three different identities as a customer. Um, if you are across multiple brands, well then, you know, that just goes exponentially from there. And the fact that some of our really complex customer relationships have 25 or more distinct identities for that customer within our environment because they happen to own multiple businesses across multiple states. They have houses in multiple states, multiple cars, sometimes fleet relationship, a third party broker relationship. And you look at this and by the time you're done, this customer's identity has blown out, right? So pulling all of that together is not something you do in a database or a data warehouse, if you're sane, because it's just not possible. Um, so when we looked at this, we implemented a, an MDM solution uh, to kind of get some of the matching rules and capabilities in place. And again, starting with open source, we uh, went to Talon for that uh, and, and didn't obviously have commercial support at this point, but initially went through an open source solution to MDM that was highly recommended. Uh, then we started pumping that into a platform. Uh, the core platform is the Data Nexus platform, which is my company, shameless plug. Um, but the the whole point of that was to get it into this data platform so that we can have it in a NoSQL environment so I can have wide rows, 
So if I have a customer that you know, has 25 relationships with us, that means we have hundreds of attributes for that customer storing that in SQL, where this guy has, say, 100, the next guy has 10, the next guy has three. One will never work. But two, even if you can make it work, is a massive waste of storage because you store a whole lot of nulls, which takes up space. Um, so we looked at a NoSQL uh, way to do that. Uh, so that's all stored in a Cassandra data store. And then the next use case that came across is we need to be able to search across multiple attributes. And then we went to using uh, Fusion, uh, which is a solar-based uh, solution for search and indexing. So at the end, it's all stored in there. That entire platform, including the, we have some stream processing being done still in Storm. We have a Kafka used for all of our queuing, both of our streaming data sets, as well as Kafka being pulled from our traditional databases. Uh, and actually, a couple weeks ago, well, a week and a half ago now, um, IAG finally open sourced their first product to the market, which is called Data Pipeline. So getup.com slash IAGCL, um, and it's called Data Pipeline, which is a, a Python-based Kafka uh, application that essentially lets you pull data in a CDC fashion from SQL and Oracle with the initial release and Postgres and write that through a Kafka stream, merge it with streaming data sets, and then write it back to a database is the version we released today. The plugins for Cassandra and Solar will be coming out from, not necessarily from IAG, but probably from my company going forward. Um, but getting that out initially and getting that done and having that be open source is a phenomenal Herculean effort from a big company perspective, especially a super conservative one. So uh, that's been open source, and that makes up another big component of how do you get that data across. All of this stuff lives, at the end of the day, on the OpenStack platform. We can deploy. We deploy in a zero-touch provisioning, all with Ansible. Everything is automated beginning to end from an operational task to a deployment task. If something breaks, we blow it away and build a new one. Um, they're all set up as distributed. They're all built to be multi-cloud. So the eventual infrastructure plan for IAG, once they get past APRA conversations, is to get this to a hybrid cloud environment where you're running active-active between AWS and your OpenStack platform. But in order to do that, everything has been built in prototype cloud native on the OSP environment. And everything is, again, deployed zero touch. People should not be logging into a server. If they do, they're doing it wrong. Um, so that whole methodology has allowed us to get a view of customers, which is now turned into a view of motor vehicle assets that are insured. It's turned into property views so that we know uh, from all the properties that we insure. Uh, it's turned into a view of claims and of policies, which has come out for the first few source systems over the last few months. And has enabled a lot of things like a lot of advanced discovery, ability to understand the business more, um, a big announcement came out earlier uh, this year that they combined a lot of the Australia divisions that were all operating separately previously from acquisitions into one big division. So when they want to pull this view of the whole Australian division together, it would have literally been impossible a year ago. Uh, whereas now, it's already done that way. It's natively done that way. Everything is stored that way. Um, so if you want to search across your entire business, no problem. Search by, if I want to know how many, for instance, Mercedes are insured in, you know, by brand or in a state. Like I want to know in NSW how many we insure. I can tell you that. By the way, it's about a third of the Mercedes built in Australia. Um, if I want to know in in Victoria, same thing. And it's actually about the same number in Victoria. So, um, and if I want to know Holdens, right, where we insure probably close to half, I know that as well. Um, you know, you can search that way. If I want to know in a particular area, whether things are more likely stick built or built out of brick or concrete or whatever else, I can look at that as well from a property perspective. All of this is all enabled by the new single view platform, and it gives you ways to slice the data. Uh, Julie's view on this is being able to search on any attribute and get there, which is not quite built yet, but getting that way, uh, you know, her, her view on it was we should have the iTunes view of the world where you can search on artist or album or song and get where you need to go. So I can search on property or car or policy or claim or person and all get to the relationship between them. 
that has not been built. That takes a lot more uh, work, and there's a lot of simplification effort going on around claims and policy systems that will enable that, but we're not there today. Um, so with all of that, again, everything built on open source from the beginning, everything built on the Red Hat OSP platform, uh, everything is built leveraging open approaches to problems. We're now open sourcing projects. We now have an open source culture within certain teams anyway. And we're enabling all of that by this kind of approach to things. So does anybody want to ask questions now? Or do you want me to talk more? Because I'd really rather ask or answer questions than talk. <laughs> OK. I guess I'll talk a little more. Um, yeah, so the, the rest of, of kind of what's going on with this is the, the kind of next piece is really to start being more uh, driven, you know, the data-driven decisions, what the first part was, that's how we got to where we are. The next piece is really about how do we start looking at combining data in more interesting ways, which is what the pipeline uh, open source project is about. Um, we actually already have another bank um, that has reached out to uh, Julie within IAG that wants to be part of that open source project. And they want to not only adopt it, but also contribute back to it. Um, so, you know, within a week of that coming out, we already have another Australian FIS company that wants to be a part of it because they've already seen the value. Um, it would be nice if GitHub had stats so we could tell how many people looked at it or downloaded it. We don't have that, but um, the, the, it, it is already seen in a number of places. There's a whole lot. Julie made a post about it when we did it. There's tons of likes there and a bunch of comments about the work. Um, and you know, it's, it is really now about how do you take it to the next place. Now, I, I'm, I'll be leaving in a few weeks. And you know, it won't be my thing going forward. But the idea was to bring us in, accelerate this process, get this capability built for them, take their three-year roadmap, and turn it into a year and a half. And, and get to where we needed to be ahead of where the rest of the company started their journey. The rest of the company started in June. We started the June before. Um, and, and we're already ready. Right? We are literally the only platform leveraging the new capabilities and technologies built in the environment. We're the only ones leveraging this platform today. But again, it's open to anyone to do that. And it is a service that we expect others to start picking up sooner than later. Right, so now I'm done talking because I don't want to talk anymore. So if you want to ask questions, I'm happy to do that. Do we have someone that wants to run a mic <laughs> so we can get it on video? Or not? OK, I can repeat the question if you want. Oh, OK. Uh, just a quick one. Um, Eddie, you're at the, I obviously know you. Um, just wanted to get your thoughts on building out the teams, um, supporting all this open source. So you obviously started with a bunch of guys. Um, as you said, IAG, very conservative generally. How many people do you have today supporting all sorts of open stack, um, open source, uh, Cassandra, Storm, and all sorts of projects you're using? How many people are working on it today? Yeah, that, there's a trick question. So. Um, Part of doing this means changing the people and changing the, the way you do things. Um, so a number of people have, have left the company, a number have changed. We've hired um, 11 new people specifically around these new next-gen technologies. Um, the core platform itself supported by a small team. Uh, the capabilities and automation on top of it, again, a very small team. Um, the platform work is all automated, so should never be more than a couple people touching it. So all in, there's probably 17 people involved, if I do the numbers right, there's probably 17 people total involved in the platform and the capabilities on the platform today with an IAG. Um, you know, the team was 224, I think, when I took it over. It's down to 112 now. Um, and a lot of skills have changed. But yeah, it's, it makes it more streamlined and it makes it easier to get the right people. It's, you know, we're just competing with a lot of other folks to hire the right people or it might be a slightly bigger team focused on it. Anyone else? Going, going. All right, I'll wrap there then. Thank you. <laughs>